All right, Cody. Uh, I thought that you and I would go for the rustic setting of the uh, the garage here. Uh, you guys have a lot of buildings on this property. Yeah, we do. How many uh, years? How does this whole thing come about? You guys, Legends of Gold. You go to South Dakota State. Yep. Mom and Dad. Mom comes and visits with you. Yep. Give me the story how your mom found this place. Uh, my mom and Dad actually came out uh, a week after my recruiting trip. And then after I had signed and told them that's where I was going, they came out because uh, originally their families are from a couple hours south of here in Iowa. So they thought it'd be a good idea to come out and see the family. And then uh, Hazen Bai, Regan Bai's dad, owns a realty um, agency. And so he was kind of looking around. They were like, hey, there's a property here. Like, you're interested in doing a like, Legend of Gold complex like my dad's always wanted to. And they stumbled upon it and it had been, been vacant for about 10 years. No one's even put a bid on it. My dad pulled out of retirement and went for it and they bid on it and then now we have Legends of Gold out here and it's an awesome facility. It's like incredible actually. Yeah, it's awesome. Because I've been talking to you know, Mark Bader, I got my brother Ferd, I've been talking to all these people and they're like, what's it like? I'm like, this place is incredible. Yeah, it's awesome. It's an awesome and, atmosphere. And when they started, you were, you I think, were a freshman or a sophomore at SDSU. Yep, I was, I was a freshman. Freshman, okay. So it started out in that kind of like down in that the weight room. That's what's the weight room now. Yep. And then he constructed this pole barn, which is right off to your right, the the wrestling room. And it's it's bigger than I mean I think every college room pretty much. I mean. It's four mats. Four full mats. So. It's huge. It's huge. Uh, Penn State's is bigger, and maybe yeah. a, a couple others. Michigan, but yep. like besides that, it's an incredible facility. Yep, now, awesome. you you know you're here in South Dakota State. You went to high school in Northern California. Yep. In the Sierra Nevadas. Yep. Quincy. Yep. Now. You know, you just finished up, uh, you did six years at South Dakota State, right? Yeah, but I got a medical bed shirt in my senior year. Okay, hold on. Hold on. You are a dude, I think you, how many lives have you spent so far? Oh, one. It's my last one. <laughs> I'm telling you, like, your dad told me about some, an accident when you were a kid. Yep. And that was, he didn't really bite your thumb off. No, well, yeah, but it sounds good. People yeah, like so it. you guys Everybody were. believes it, all the campers love it, so. <laughs> you guys were telling me that, I almost like believed it. But, <laughs> looking at, you were in an accident with, like, bleachers, right? Yep. And like you broke your ankle? Yeah, I compound fractured my tibia and fibia and lost my right thumb. That's crazy. Yeah, it was nuts. Okay, and then he was telling me another one where you got an infection in your spine. Yeah, I got an ear infection in junior high school and it ended up going paralyzed in the middle of a match. Just stood up and paralyzed from the neck down for about 30 days. And told me I'd have 48 hours to live and. Yeah, I am they, fulfilling my dream and wrestling. And they told you that. Yep. They gave dad. you time, like a frame. Ah, you got uh, forty two days. Yep. They told me that I had spinal meningitis. What they told my parents. And well, yeah, you died from spinal because that's something that just kills you. Yeah, exactly. So they all my family and friends flew in, and they told me I had forty eight hours, and said if I ever if I get past it, I'd be lucky to walk. And yeah, I am wrestling and. You're a junkyard moment. dog. <laughs> you are, man. Your dad's a junkyard dog. Oh, Your yeah. mom's a junkyard dog. Your sister, she's just, you know, she's just a teenage yeah, girl. She's normal now. She's normal for now. Yeah, she's normal for now. With the other the three of you, man, I watch you guys. It's, it's, it's kind of crazy. But, you know, and you had some injuries throughout, you know, shoulder. Yep. Shoulder at South Dakota State. Yep. Knee. So you tore your knee this year. Yep. I mean, so it's like you've never really had a season where you could be healthy. Be healthy, yeah. But I know you're a freestyle and Greco guy because your dad, then he told me you've placed at Fargo six times. Yep. Six times All-American at Fargo. So, you know, going into college, you were never a state placer in Cal the state of California. Nope. But, like, it's kind of like this. you've had some mixed results, but it sounds like the freestyle and the Greco is kind of more your route. Yeah, exactly. When you, but when you look at it now, you are actually going to be moving to Colorado Springs. Yep, I'm going to go live at the training center for four years and train only Greco. Make a run for 2020 and get to Tokyo. Is it 75 kilos? Or yeah, it'd be 75 kilos. 75 kilos? Is yeah, that so the world's weight, which would be 71 kilos, which is... You'll I'll cut go. to that? Yeah, but I'll go 71 kilos. So, well, that'll be good for you. Perfect, it's right there for me. Um, looking at, you know, like, how Greco and Freestyle has kind of been your sport, college wrestling's hard. Oh, it is, it's a grind. It's, a that, it's like the de definition of a word, and you're a tough guy. Yeah. You're not like a soft guy, you're real tough. <laughs> you almost died on several occasions, literally. Yeah. Um, what would you say to, you know, we're starting to get into this almost like fork in the road for some kids. We got people that are moving to the training center and kind of foregoing almost like what a Cejudo did yep. type deal. You know, what would you do if you had to do it over again? Would you wrestle college? Would you stay strictly Greco? What would you do? Um, actually, I was going to go to Marquette right out of high school. I was going to go train at Northern Michigan with Devon. And then Devon kind of said he was getting ready to leave. So 
I decided at that point I, don't, I wanted to wrestle Greco only. And then uh, since Abando was leaving, there's no other place like it, like to go to Marquette. And I wanted to get a degree, so I went to college, and that's what I started doing my college wrestling. What's your degree? Uh, sociology, and then I have like two classes left for my elementary education. Are you going to do that? I'm thinking about it. I'm going to see what I can do and hopefully get a part-time subbing job out in Colorado Springs and start helping out there. You're a pretty nice guy. Probably like something where you'll be able to work with kids. Yeah. I, I mean, There's no question. I've seen you work with kids all this week. But um, what's an experience you can take from all these near-death? Like what, what's something you can relate to someone for, from all the near-death experiences? Your dad said when you had the – was it ear infection or yeah. spinal? It, it started as ear. It dripped in the spinal cord. So. What, what, when you've faced mortality and almost died on multiple occasions, you know how do you apply that to life? And, and what do you say to someone like, you know, you, you don't know when your time's up. Exactly. But what what are you what have you taken from these like experiences? Yeah, you know, I've taken it for granted. You know, I used to say wrestling, oh, like we all go through our times where it sucks. Like, damn, like this, I don't want to do this anymore. But then you get taken away from you, and it's it's life changing. You miss it every day. And now I go out with the wrestle, and I'm happy to wrestle. I'm happy to be on the mat again. I don't take it for granted because, like you said, it can, it can happen anytime. And so with that, it's just I'm trying to tell these little kids to, you know, get out as much as you can, build a friendship because these friends that you make at camps and through wrestling, friends for life. We're a, we're a whole family as a wrestling community, and it's something that you know we take for granted. And once you get taken away from you, is when you really understand how important it is to you. I mean, I, yeah, it's amazing that you like were able to. Will you qualify for the NCAA three times? Four times. Four, you qualified all four times. Yep. That's amazing what you're able to accomplish with kind of being behind the eight ball there, like with some health uh, health issues. Yeah. Um, when you look at California, how much different was your transition from Northern California to South Dakota? It was a little different. Uh, I came like when I when I came to South Dakota State, I didn't go for you know like the big school name. I went where I felt comfortable and where I was easy to you know, go out and meet people and be sociable. And when I came out there, it was, it was very easy. I got, I felt, I felt at home. And I felt like I had friends that I've known there forever. And that's where I went. And the transition with the weather is a little different, but, you know, it was a good, I think it was a good choice for me. I enjoyed it. And I got to be around some of the best coaches and build some great friends that I'm going to have for the rest of my life. Your dad, Terry, is a pretty tough guy. Yeah, he's crazy. He, he told me he's won, like, multiple tough man contests. Yeah, he did. He won the Fox. Cleveland one in Cleveland, yeah. Ohio, yeah, as a matter Fox of fact. For, like, I think he's professional for, like, two years, three years. So He's a junkyard dog. Do you think you take more from your mom or your dad? Uh, probably my dad's college wrestlers that I've been around all my whole life. So, I mean, they all beat me up when I was little. And, you know, him, he doesn't care. He never stopped it. He encouraged them to keep beating me up because I was a crazy little kid. But now it's kind of shaped me into the person I am. And... You know, it's, it's an awesome ex to have my dad to be able to have me growing up in that atmosphere with those kind of wrestlers and seeing everything that goes into it. And, and pretty much he made me who I am. He might outwork. Your mom might outwork him. Oh, yeah, definitely. He does. I mean, she's, she goes hard, she man. Does. Yeah, she's doing everything. That's amazing. Uh, in the end, like, do you see yourself, you go through a quad cycle of Greco. Do you see yourself coming back and running this place, helping your family, working with your family? What do you see yourself doing in the future? Uh, you know, I, I always want to get back to the sport. That's one of my biggest things when I'm done competing, uh, whether it's the, this cycle or the next cycle. Um, I always want to get back. You know, definitely with everything going on here, I'd like to come back and I can coach forever. You know, when I can coach when I'm 30 years old, but I, want, I can't compete. So I'm going to get my competing in now and then hopefully come back here when I'm done and keep going on with this legacy of Legends of Gold.